Right, well, you heard um, people from Access All Areas talking about Mabel's records. We thought it would be really useful to include, and these are in your pack, the records that some of the uh, facsimiles of the records, copies of the records that, that she actually had. And uh, so that's a, a really useful thing to do in sort of factual English, a whole series of things, or indeed in science, and I'm identifying all the scientific words that are in here which will then lead us on to the activity which is called false science because what uh, backed up all of this was a movement, first of all, of social reformers who believe that this marginal group between normal people and people who were, quote, idiots and imbeciles, what were called the feeble-minded, needed to be identified because they were dragging down the country's ability to run the empire. And this was the view that was put forward, and so there had to be a, a method found to measure this. And so psychologists at this time, a hundred years ago, had no status and no scientific basis for what they were doing, and so they made up a whole series of tests that have been shown since to be completely false. Interestingly enough, Theresa May wants to use the same tests to actually sort children now for grammar schools. They are exactly the same tests that were actually developed by people like Cyril Burke, and it is called the 11 plus. It is a basically an intelligence test of a very narrow band of what it means to be aware of the world, and it only measures one element. Yet Mabel was put through these tests, as we can see on this, if we go on to the, the second bit of it, um, uh, well... You can pick it up, but basically she had a test. She uh, she said in the film that she went to the town hall to to be tested. She went from first of all being educationally subnormal, severe, uh, to being then after the test result at eleven told that she was ineducable, and after that she received no education at all, uh, and it was all based on these sorts of tests. So. What are these tests? Well, we've included in the pack three types of tests, some developed in America, one which was for servicemen coming into the American Army in 1917 in the First World War, and from that certain ridiculous statements about the intelligence of different races were drawn, mm -hmm. because this was a very large survey, and the idea that black people were inferior to white was reinforced from these tests. Uh, now, they were culturally biased tests in that if you were white and from a middle class background, you were going to do much better than uh, if you came from a home which was in poverty and you didn't know most of the things that were in the test. They also then, Michael Goddard, developed some tests for immigrants, from which he came up with the astounding idea that people from Southern Europe, Jews and so on, had 80% uh, of them had learning difficulty, and this led to legislation in the United States which prevented this group of people coming in to America. And you see how damaging all of this was. It also led to compulsory sterilization, stopping people having children because of these tests. So this is all a travesty against humanity, and it was all based on a wrong premise. What was the wrong premise? We know these people are inferior, so let's prove it. Everybody who's a scientist says, no, you try and prove the opposite of what you believe. Now, in our science curriculum, there is a section called false science, and we're hoping that schools will all start using this to show how science can be misused and affect people in such a dramatic way. And in the bundle, I've also included the standard tests that were used, uh, which can, I'll just quote one or two things from them, which you can see... Uh, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. um, So it's called a uh, list of serial tests. The people who developed these believed that uh, by the age of 14 you could determine where someone was going to be for life. And if they didn't develop their uh, capacity by then, then it was fixed. And this was really what led to people being locked away because there was felt there was no hope, people would never develop. And it was actually people, psychologists, four of them really, in the 1950s, who began to test this and say, well, this isn't actually true. These people who we've got locked up can actually learn. They learn in different ways, but they can learn and they can develop. And all of the work that the OU have done on the social history of learning differently demonstrates this. But at the time, all medical people 
believe this to be the case. And uh, the, what was his name, that guy? The tread, treadgold? Tread, treadgold. Treadgold. Alfred. Alfred Treadgold produced a handbook that all doctors were trained with. You can still find this on the internet, but for 50 years, this was the book. It was in use until the 1980s. Yes. Yeah. So this was one of the tests that came out of it. And the sorts of things that people were asked to do, let me pick uh, one area. You can actually develop this if you get the, the things that are required here. So let's take the age, age uh, nine test, for instance. Ball and field test. A circle about two inches, 4.8 centimeters across, is drawn to represent a round field. And a small, small gap for a gateway. Say, suppose you had lost a ball in a big field like that, mark with a pencil the way you would walk to be sure to find it. That's quite a difficult question, I think. <laughs> so if you can't answer that, you've got a mental age below nine. <laughs> Repeat four digits backwards. Six, nine, three, one. Seven, five, eight, two. Four, nine, four, seven. These are tests that are still used whenever a child is questioned whether they have special needs. These are the sorts of questions that educational psychologists ask them today, in 2016. So you can see how this, these ideas have seeped in to the whole way that we choose which, where children are educated, where young people are educated, and so on. So the link then is to this. So the second, so there's a lot there on full science, and because this is quite a complex area, we've provided teacher notes on the whole history of this, so that they read it before they go and work with the children about it, because they'll have lots of questions, so at least they're brief, because it's not in their training. Nobody gets this in their training, and it should be. It's part of the history that we're uncovering through Disability History Month, and why we were so pleased to work on this. A second activity we did, if we could find the map, that would be quite useful, but you've got it in your pack as well. Uh, we thought, thanks to Nigel getting some data, uh, that we'd map all the long-stay institutions. They weren't hospitals until it became the National Health Service. They were long-stay institutions under the local authority uh, boards. Or uh, private. Or private. Or we haven't got the pride one, private ones here. We've got the large institutions that had over 200 uh, inmates, uh, patients as they called them later on, but they weren't really patients because there was nothing wrong with them. Uh, and so we've mapped them all. And what's interesting, if you, we found, if you click on that link, you will find the map, and then if you can dig it up. Uh, yeah, come, come down a bit. Yeah, that's it. And, right, and if we could make it a bit bigger. Uh, yeah, if you want to go on the plus, thank you. Uh, right. Okay, let's, uh, let's pick uh, one or two in that corner that we are there. Uh, I don't know which one. <laughs> click, just click on that left click. All right, this is Clay Penny Colony Hospital. Right, and so you click on that, you can find where it was by the postcode, so you can take a geography field trip out to look at what is left of Claypenny uh, Colony. Probably not much. Most of these sites were sold off uh, and are now very swish housing estates. And, uh, and then we can go down a bit. We can see on, on the other side. Get down on there. Uh, and we've got information there. Bearing amounts. And I hope as people do research on this, local research, you'll send it in and we'll then enhance the web. This is a living... Uh, website. So the more local research there is, the more we can add to information about each site. A couple of things, there's an activity in here, and if you compare the density of population, that's where most people live, what you find is that these weren't set miles away from where people live, they were set 15 to 20 miles away from where most people live. Uh, and it's quite interesting that, that you get this pattern. And then of course you can think about how long it would have taken people in the 1910s, 1920s, 1930s to get to visit their relatives. 15 miles at that time, when most people didn't have a car, was a whole day's journey, but often changing trains, buses and so on, it would have cost a lot. Mm -hmm. So in fact, most people didn't get visits from their family at all, even if they wanted to they visit They were only them. allowed to visit yeah. once a month yeah. once anyway. Once. So that gives you a flavour of some of the activities, how we can actually bring this into the curriculum uh, and it can actually be part of the work that children are doing and young people are doing in schools and colleges. And Richard has produced that map. I think it's in, uh, Nigel did the original research. Richard did the put it on Google Map. 
And I think it's really quite an important resource because what we're in danger of is wiping this history from the landscape. You go and look at Leeson Hospital, what was Leeson Hospital. It's now the Warner Brothers, something or other. There is not even a plaque there that says this place was home to 2,000 plus people for 70, 80 years. There's nothing. And developers are quite resistant to putting anything on these sites to say, this is where we are used to live. Because they, I don't know, I haven't asked them exactly, but they're certainly not that true. So I think it's really a really important contribution, Richard, that you've made, which I think will go wider than the materials. And, um,